filed in the office for public view. And so the purpose of this public hearing is to hear um, whatever anyone has to say uh, about that map plan and report and the idea about creating an ambulance district for the town of Malta, inclusive of the village around Lake. So whoever would like to be heard, please do so. Anybody, and Jamie, why don't you tell me if anybody's raising their hand? Give them a minute. Pretty much everybody heard me though, right, Jamie? Okay, there being no comments on the uh, on the ambulance public hearing, we'll close the public hearing at what looks like 6.05. Um, and we'll proceed to our second public hearing. And this is on the uh, chapter 139 streets and sidewalk amendment, which changes the effective date of the uh, ordinance change on the uh, sidewalks in the High Point neighborhood. So would anyone like to be heard on that issue of effective date of that uh, legislative change? Anyone with hands up, Jamie? Okay, there being no, no public comments on that, we'll close that public hearing at 6.06 .06 p.m. And we'll open the third public hearing. And this is on the chapter 167 informed based code amendment uh, dealing with the proposal for the uh, dog boarding um, uh, installation up on Route 9. Would anybody like to be heard on that? No one, Jamie? Okay, we'll close that public hearing at 6.07 p.m. And um, now we can start our meeting. So if everyone would uh, uh, join me in a salute to the flag and a silent prayer. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty, thank you very much. Uh, the first item on the agenda tonight is the uh, town clerk uh, minutes of April 26th and May 3rd. Do we have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, the next item on, on our agenda is a uh, presentation uh, by Catherine Sarah at CT Mail regarding our uh, water and sewage strategic plan. So uh, Catherine. Hi, how are you doing? Could you step up to the lectern so that we can hear you? I also have my colleague, Jim Thatcher from CT Mail. So we'll both be presenting tonight. All righty, welcome, Jim. Thanks very much to both of you for coming. Thank you. So I assume the board has a copy of our report in case we want to refer to some figures. Is that correct? Yep, yes. we all have it. That's great. Um, so again, my name is Catherine Sarah. I'm a project manager and civil engineer at CT Mail. Um, CT Mail is the firm that the town hired um, about nine months ago to prepare a strategic infrastructure plan, um, really to focus on the feasibility of water and sewer infrastructure within four study areas in the town of Malta. And the focus of this study is more on the com commercially zoned areas and um, really looking at what additional infrastructure needs are necessary for economic development. So again, the study was not to look at existing areas that had water and sewer issues. Um, it was more to focus on, again, the four study corridors, the commercial um, zones within the town. So I, I will tend to repeat study areas one through four, and I'll just briefly explain to the public. Um, again, there's a lot of maps that the town board has. Um, so study area one would be Route 67 west of the Northway to the Balson town line. Area two is Route 9 south of Stonebreak Road to the village of Round Lake Limit. Area three is Luther Forest Technology Campus. And area four is Route 9 north of 9P and East High Street. 
So the study really looked at seven uh, key items. Um, the first is going to be, what is the existing water and sewer infrastructure in those areas? Uh, what is the potential build out of any parcels that are vacant or are um, underutilized within those commercial corridors? What would be the water demand and sewer flows from any future build out? And those, the, do the existing systems have capacity to accept additional flows or demands to accommodate this, this future growth? Um, what sort of infrastructure projects would be needed to serve these development areas? The cost of those um, infrastructure projects. And again, my colleague Jimmy is here to discuss funding and financing options. Um, so again, I'm trying to keep this brief, but if there's any questions the board has, please interrupt and I'd rather this be more of a conversation than me just speaking to the report. Um, so I would say is the foundation for this report is actually, um, it's Appendix B in the overall study. Um, it's actually a uh, market demand and zoning analysis done by Camoyne Associates. Um, they are a local firm out of Saratoga that does that specialized kind of work. Because really the focus here is you have these um, generally commercially zoned corridors that do have a lot of properties that are currently vacant. They own our zoned commercial and business. Um, Camoyne Associates really took a look at within the next one to 15 years, what's reasonable development in those parcels? It's a bit unrealistic to say that every single vacant parcel from Stonebreak Road down to the village on Route 9 is gonna be developed in 15 years, but what's a more reasonable approach? So again, I thought their study was great as a resident of the town. It was really interesting to read, you know, what drives commercial demand in the town of Malta. And again, a lot of it is that lots of people live here. I live here. I don't work here. <laughs> My husband doesn't work here. My kids go to school here. I love the community. So actually, I really felt that the Kamoyan study was great for someone like me that was like, yeah, we need more, you know, recreation. We need, you know, potentially a little bit more restaurants, something for us to do so we don't have to leave the town of Malta, you know, to go on our everyday business. Um, so again, the, that build out study is definitely the crux of, we'll say the engineering side of the study. So I just will briefly go through some of the findings. Again, I do apologize to members of the public who don't have that in front of them. Um, but again, this is something that will be publicly available and would definitely appreciate the public taking a look at that. Um, so kind of what Kamoyne Associates did was they looked at the parcel zoning, parcel size, any green space requirements, setbacks, parking requirements, and determined which properties within the study areas would be reasonable for development. They looked at immediate development, which is kind of like one to two or three years. And they also took a look at potential long-term trends. They actually did start their work in the midst of the pandemic and did actually wait till there was some economic forecast coming out for 21-22. So I think most people thought a year ago, we'd be in bad shape a year from now. That kind of was not necessarily that trend, especially in Saratoga County. Um, so just a brief summary, um, again, for development area one, which is 67 West of the Northway, uh, Kamoyne did identify one parcel along 67. Um, it's actually the parcel that has that abandoned farmhouse um, on the north side of 67, um, just past the vet's office. Um, that is about a hundred acre parcel. <clears throat> um, they did identify that that could serve up to 1.1 million square feet of building, which I drive by that every day. That's alarming. Um, but, you know, they did say that that's a, a prime candidate for transportation, warehousing, that's necessary, um, light industry flex or R&D. Um, but they did not see any other parcels along 67 that have present at this time significant development opportunity. Um, for area two, which is again, Route 9 south of Stonebreak Road, identify, did identify two parcels. Um, pretty much they're parcels that do have existing development on. They're kind of near the old tree pad, which is now Afram Sports, um, and the property, uh, Kinney Quarter, kind of the John Doe uh, ma manufacturing development. Kamoyne really did not feel there was any economic driver for significant additional development on Route 9 in that area. Um, Luther Forest, Area 3, um, there is a potential proposal on the table. We're all aware of the news of Global Foundries headquarters. Uh, but again, Kamoyne's study was done late 20, early 2021. So they're more looking at trends versus the news and talk because um, sometimes you realize that might not result in actual development. Um, Kamoyne did feel that three of the pods within LFTC are potential for development within the next one to 15 years. I'm sure you've heard the term pod. They're all the approved development areas within LFTC. 
um, they're looking at developing pod five, which is Stonebreak Road. And that's gonna be your mixed commercial with offices, possibly some supply chain use. Uh, pod eight, which is on Luther Forest Boulevard, a little bit further south in development, you'd come off exit 11 and kind of head through that way. So that's about 110 acres. And they're looking at, again, mixed commercial with nanotech offices. The third pod is kind of right up next to Global Foundries. It's the old uh, Malta Rocket Test Center off Hermes Road. That's, again, about 100 acres that can be anywhere from community um, uses, uh, dining, outdoor retail, commercial uses. And just to summarize, Route 9 North, which is, again, that kind of vacant area past the Malta Drive-In heading up to exit 13. Um, there's a lot of constrained lands in that area, creek wetlands, um, but Camoyne did identify four parcels that could potentially have some development, um, which could range in use from offices to retail to restaurants. Um, some indoor recreation is possible, and then obviously warehouse space. Warehouse space does come up a lot in their study. I think we all realize that that is a change in trend over the past year. You need the warehouses to be close to the people. Um, so again, I don't want to Kind of waste time talking about the build out analysis, but I definitely felt that that was a critical part of this overall study to kind of understand well, why are we talking about certain water and sewer upgrades but not others? Again, we're not assuming every single parcel in these four major development corridors are going to get developed. That's really just not reasonable. We want to focus on what would be a reasonable water and sewer upgrade. So after we received that build out analysis from Kamoin, um, we did provide it to the town for a look over and have everyone say, hey, that makes sense. You can move forward with the more engineering and planning side of this study. Um, we did project out water and sewer use based upon um, a reasonable max build outs, reasonable use of the buildings. There was a wide range depending on if it was a restaurant versus an office building. Restaurants use a lot more water than office buildings or warehouse. So we do provide a good range in flows in our study. Um, just to quickly summarize the results. Uh, for area one, again, the area west of the north way, we actually found out that the existing water, which is Clifton Park Water Authority, has adequate capacity to serve that future development. Uh, sewer is currently served Saratoga County Sewer District. They do have enough capacity to serve that development. Can that would I, kind of be um, the, the most it could take. <laughs> but we identified that there was no need to have any sort of upgrades to any infrastructure in that area, again, to serve this potential development of that parcel. Can I interrupt you if, for one question? Yes, um, the, the determination as to whether infrastructure is needed to be built um, is based on um, the treatment capacity existing somewhere, right? And main trunk lines existing in the proximity of the parcel right that's correct yep but it doesn't necessarily mean that uh you wouldn't have a significant extension of uh individual service when i think about the 100 acres you refer to when i last remember looking at this and and i could be not recalling it clearly you would need a significant extension uh, from the existing main lines to service that property. Am I? There's actually water and sewer basically right at the corner of the property. At the corner. Pretty much near where the new uh, Mahook Chevrolet building is. So they would need to extend this, the water or sewer into their property on the private side. But from any sort of extensions, we'll say on the public side of the project, it would be just crossing Route 67 for the uh, water or just doing a direct connection right by the vet's office for the sewer. Would you humor me one more second here? Sure. Um, when you refer to the 100 acres, I immediately think of the Catholic church parcel. Mm -hmm. is, that the, is that the one we're talking about? No, it's- Okay, that's why the I'm church, Then there's the vet, and then you keep going, and there's that one of the kind of the old farmhouse that's run okay. down with the gates in front. All right. So to get service to the old, the Catholic Church parcel would require the extension. 
I get, keep going. Yes, we may. I mean, we can maybe look at a map after and kind of point through things. Okay, I just want so, to get my bearings. Yeah. So the 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 hundred acres is viewed as the most likely to be developed. That's correct. And that has the water and sewer. Yep. Okay, that yep. helps me a lot. Thank yes. you very much. I, I just I, I just want to um, go in here. Um, I didn't know that there was a hundred acres on that on that side of sixty seven, other than the Catholic Church property. Do do we know? I, I think I think that is the, the okay. Catholic Church property. Yeah, Catholic. I mean, I apologize. I didn't grow up in the area, but yeah. I didn't know that that was that was formerly the church property. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, and and actually, they still own it. And you know, there's a dispute on assessment and everything. So, and then there's some restrictive things in the deed and stuff. So that there are some legal, you know, problems with that property too. I think. But, then but I yeah. correct myself. That is the same property we're thinking of. Okay. So water and sewer is there. <laughs> Essentially, right there. Okay. Great. Yep. Thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Any more questions? before I kind of talk about the results. Um, um, so again, just for to answer your question about capacity, I'm CTML is the engineer for Clifton Park Water Authority. I do retain the hydraulic model. I did talk to them regarding if there was this additional water use. There's no issues with further extending Clifton Park system to the north. This That is the northernmost <coughs> part of Clifton Park system. For county sewer, I've had discussions with county sewer throughout. Um, unfortunately, they don't have a meter that for that area, but we did run calculations and look at all the past reports to determine, you know, what sort of flows um, are current and are, you know, budgeted for development that's there, including multi medical and any expansions of it. Um, so throughout the process, we were working directly with the utility uh, utilities on this. Um, so kind of sound redundant area two. we kind of had the same results as area one where there's actually currently existing water and sewer infrastructure for that section of route nine. Um, that section of route nine is served by Saratoga Water Services, the private water company, and it is served by county sewer. Um, so essentially we said that those parcels that were identified for additional development actually are right there and could tap in directly into those utilities. There's no issues with um, capacity for sewer and Saratoga Water Services has ample additional capacity to serve additional customers. Um, so we'll actually skip down to area four. I'll go talk about Luther Forest last, it's a little more involved. And area four again is Route 9 north of 9P East High Street. Um, Kamoyne really felt that the potential for development would be the properties um, in between Steeplechase, uh, kind of near the Malta Drive-In, um, heading up to uh, Hearn Road, there was a parcel that parcel that was recently rezoned. Um, they did not identify any significant potential development really north of that area heading towards exit 13. Um, so for that area four, we there's currently Saratoga Water Services providing water up to St. Ledger's Woods on that development. Um, so I did speak with um, Mr. Mackey at Saratoga Water Services. Uh, he does feel that they have enough capacity and the ability to serve from a pressure standpoint, a development in that area, kind of I'll say around the Malta Drive-In, not obviously the Malta Drive-In itself, but the vacant parcels across the street and in that general area. Um, essentially, the only thing that would need to be done is they would need to extend a 10-inch main from St. Ledger's Woods north to Hearn Road um, in order to accommodate that. Sewer is a little bit more interesting. I spent a lot of time with Saratoga County because um, there's a lot of pump station networks up in that area. Um, we determined that there's currently um, about 75 gallons a minute of capacity in the, the pump station. There actually is a sewage pump station in front of St. Ledger's Woods. I don't know if any of you notice it. I notice weird things when I drive by. Again, my kids think of nuts, <laughs> but um, 75 gallons a minute is actually a lot of flow. Um, the one thing that we identified in the study was that the potential development in that area could range um, significantly in actually water and sewer use from a warehouse, which does not use a lot of water, to kind of a mixed use uh, retail, residential, or even an indoor use. Um, so we did go through in the report and kind of say, if certain types of development happen, we may not need to do any upgrades to that pump station. If we come in with you know, two or three heavy water users, then we would need to actually expand the pump station. Uh, there is room for an expansion. Um, but essentially what we're saying is, you know, you need to build about 2000 feet of gravity sewer coming down from Hearn Road, crossing the creek along a state road. Again, these are not cheap infrastructure extensions at all when you're talking about wetland streams and dealing with DOT. Um, but that we kind of say, 
you know, if we see a lot of development with heavy water use, then you also would need to look at expanding the pump station. But if you don't, you could actually tie into it. Um, so this was the one area where we had a lot of if this happens, then this happens in our in our projections and our cost estimate. Um, so to Luther Forest, which I'm sure many of us in the room are kind of interested in. So again, I'm not projecting or saying that any of these areas are going to be developed. Um, just saying is if they're developed, what sort of water and sewer infrastructure are necessary. Um, so there's a lot going on in that particular area. Um, the majority of Luther Forest is served by Saratoga County Water Authority. Um, there is an agreement in place with Saratoga Water Services, the private water company, that they would provide water to pod five, which is again, the pod just south of the Luther Forest neighborhood. So I have a copy of that agreement, it's, it's there. Um, so that kind of drove, when I looked at providing water, we obviously need to look at that agreement. Um, so essentially to serve pod five, we would need to extend water about 3,700 feet to the Saratoga Water Services System. Um, again, cost of that's about a million dollars. Um, again, just for cost, they are cost opinions. They're based upon almost no engineering design. Um, so we do hold contingencies. And these costs are, are based upon $2021. Um, they do include a 20% contingency. And they are based assuming that these would be publicly funded projects that would need to utilize New York State prevailing wage. So someone might say that's on the high end. Um, believe me, anyone in this room who's trying to buy materials or build a construction project knows that costs are escalating. So I'd rather give you something that's on the conservative end than something that's not. Um, and obviously Kevin's great with money. He knows to escalate my estimate five, six percent a year if you're going to build this in five years. <laughs> so. Um, so for the remainder of Luther Forest, again, pod six, which is Hermes Road Rocket Drive, um, we would need to, we would have the ability to connect to the county water system as, as a user agreement. And I can discuss that more if you're interested in how that works. Um, extend water about 2,000 feet on Rocket Drive to the existing main that runs through the forest. So about a $650,000 project. Pod 8 is actually directly located at the existing county water line, and they've already built a stub. So that's a no cost to, I mean, obviously anyone developing it would have internal water mains, but there's really no cost on the public side for that project. Um, sewer also is quite interesting. <laughs> there is a large uh, county trunk sewer that basically was designed to serve global foundries. I designed it. I did all the original sizing calcs back in 05. So I finally got to find that file and bring it to life 15 years later. Um, it's a large sewer that kind of runs through town of Stillwater, comes down the hill, goes on 67 and crosses the creek. Um, that's a 10 million gallon per day sewer. Um, and we're looking at keeping that for global foundries and any potential expansion of it. So it's there, but our proposal is not to seek connecting into that because we feel that that user really needs <laughs> that water and sewer capacity. So where do we leave that? There's existing sewer at the TechSmart campus. And there's existing sewer all the way on Stonebreak Road, um, kind of right by the intersection of Route 9. So we looked at the capacity of those two existing sewers. That's kind of a key um, issue in terms of discussions we're having right now, um, because you assume um, a development mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, very modest in comparison to, you know, one that's being discussed. Correct. And we really did struggle with, we had to go with what was under the current zoning. Right. You know, again, the study took about nine months. We had to make assumptions along the way. Um, you know, I understand that that development came in. Uh, Jamie did provide me a copy of it, you know, early on in the study. Um, you know, and again, these are really just projections at a point in time. <laughs> Um, I understand. But they're very helpful to any developer who wants to come into Luther Forest. You know, we've done the math. We've looked at what really it's what the existing capacity is around Luther Forest, and they can actually apply their flows and water uses and see, like, does that make sense? And, and I get, I'm, you know, saying that this is a very useful tool. Um, but again, if the, the potential project comes in and the, the zoning is altered, then obviously that needs to be discussed All about what additional yeah. water and sewer yeah. would be in there. <clears throat> um, so from a sewer perspective, we feel that if development occurs within pod six and nine, which is again, the old Malta, 
rocket test facility that there is enough capacity at the TechSmart campus. There is a pump station there. If you get it, pumps kind of size our system naturally. Um, there is enough uh, capacity in that pump station for the, we'll say maximum build out of that area. Um, so that would be running the gravity sewer main to TechSmart about half a million dollar extension. Uh, for those other pods five and eight, which are kind of really in the middle of the campus when you're driving through, there's kind of nothing for a while. Um, those are the big pods five and eight. Um, there is capacity at Stonebreak Road near the roundabout on Route 9 for both of those pods at full development with a high intense water use. Um, we would need to run gravity sewers, install a pump station in Luther Forest. Uh, we feel the best location is around 100 Acre Woods Way. Um, and then from that pump station, about a six inch force main to Stonebreak Road. Um, all in, that would be about a two and a half million dollar project. Uh, that could be designed to be phased. If area eight happens first, you could actually build a smaller pump station. And if area five comes in, you can expand your pump station. Um, so, um, you know, I don't wanna, if please ask questions, I kind of didn't wanna take up too much time, but if you felt that you needed more information, um, I definitely would like my colleague Jim Thatcher to come up to talk about options for funding because that's been the most questions I've gotten um, on this study from folks sure. involved. Um, but if there's any questions specifically on, say, the engineering side, um, you know, feel free to ask before Jim talks about the money part. Uh, one, one, Catherine. Um, you mentioned sewer capacity, and then you know the reserve for global, and I assume you're talking about eight point two, right? So uh, how about the water supply side of that? Uh, I mean, uh, were you also contemplating a reserve for just in case 8.2 comes along right. in terms uh, of capacities for these other areas? Yes, County Water Authority has been looking at increasing the capacity of their system uh, yeah. with that in mind. Right. Um, you know, they've really known, because again, the original GEIS right. includes these areas uh, five and eight. So, um, you know, they understand that you know, right now they're looking at, you know, additional distribution, additional potential storage. Um, you know, I did work hand in hand with the water authority on that yeah. one. But again, if there, if water authority was to serve the parcels in Luther Forest, there would have to be an agreement made. Right now, there's no agreement between Luther Forest uh, Economic Development Corporation and the water authority. Right. Yeah. Um, the water authority is not set up to basically sell water. They, they bulk wholesale it. So I, Kind of live near the county water line i couldn't just call up and say hey can i be a customer i'd have to run myself through town of Boston or clifton park so um there's a little bit of a process with county water authority um but luther forest has always had i'm not gonna say a legal agreement because that's not correct but understanding <laughs> that they're part of um, any future demands for the county water system thank you and just Jim. before we we jump into the the, the funding i just want to say this is really an incredibly comprehensive and thorough review. And, and I think being able to meld some of the economic development and market review with the engineering and technical is, is, is wildly helpful and, and certainly very timely, both with, with projects that we have before us right now and, and some of the planning that we have in, in front of us. So this is, is really fantastic. Yeah, and I'll work. say it was neat for me too, because I mean, other engineers who do this will you know, let's say, oh, can we put water to this area? And it might be an existing development or, you know, mm -hmm. assuming be a, you know, three or 4% growth rate. This is one where, you know, we just couldn't do that right. because, and again, I feel like so many people are like, well, why isn't that property down route nine developing? It's been vacant for years. Um, I was just so interested in Kamoin's study. I mean, not to knock the report that CT mail did, but that was very helpful. And I think again, the town it's that, that study in itself is very useful to understand the trends. Yeah. For development. Bob and his team are the best. Yep. So I'll let Jim speak. <clears throat> Hello, board, Hello. supervisor. Thank you for coming. Town of Malta. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, I love following engineers because I'm not an engineer. <laughs> so I get to talk differently than engineers, hopefully. I'm going to be very brief for you because I know we've kind of run over our presentation time and you have a whole meeting ahead of you. But, um, and I think that the text, at least in the draft, speaks for itself. There's some clarifications I can make or, or I can refine it a little bit um, if we have that opportunity to get things a little more targeted. I gave you kind of a long menu of funding options. You know, economic development is difficult when you're doing infrastructure because um, there's the speculative side to things that the state 
or a lot of agencies don't really want to get into funding because you never know if something's going to be built. Take an industrial park, creating a lot of lots or subdividing land for future build out, um, but putting taxpayer dollars into that kind of investment when there's all kinds of space available throughout the capital region or New York State in general that's already been developed waiting for tenants is difficult for a lot of funding agencies. Um, on the other hand, here in Malta with global and the other kind of big transformational developments you've been able to, to attract, you get more attention maybe in Albany than some other communities might. Um, you're kind of driving the bus, so to speak. Um, and when Samsung and the other companies, uh, you know, a few days ago were talking about making a deal and investing in New York State, you know, Saratoga County is definitely in play. Uh, and other places in the state are, aren't going to have a shot at that, no matter what. That's just kind of the facts of where we are. So I think you have some better options than some other communities. What I would focus on, you know, I, in any kind of grant work I do with municipalities, I tend to focus on the low-hanging fruit. It's easier for me as a professional to, to write those applications. It's easier for you maybe to, to be awarded something and get to administer these, these programs. Um, without a lot of doing a lot of gymnastics and politics and things that, you know, and on its face, putting in a quality application is always at least kind of your baseline and then working the angles as best you can. So within my section of Catherine's report or, or your report, um, I think Empire State Development, which helped fund this study is probably your, one of your go-to organizations. You've probably had a lot of history with them for what's been developed so far. Uh, in Malta, particularly in Luther Forest. Um, the Environmental Facilities Corp, well, let me go back a step to Empire State Development. One of the good things they did this year is, you know, they've always had a couple different baskets of generic economic development funding. And a lot of it was going through the consolidated funding application process, which is an annual uh, nine year and running web-based portal where you apply for 30 plus programs and 10 different state agencies and sort of take your chances. Um, that timing of a, of a July application on an annual basis is not good for businesses that are relocating or maybe a, a mid-sized company that's expanding in a, in a large way because you submit your application, wait for an award in December when the governor used to do his big thing in Albany and then get going the following year, really, with grant agreements and all the minutia of the funding award. So Empire State Development so far this year has taken a lot of their, their discretionary economic development money out of what we call the CFA or the Consolidated Funding Application Process. So that puts it into the other basket they always had, to me at least, which is kind of their offline, or what they, some people call offline funding meaning you can go to them directly, talk to them about a project. Uh, in this case, you have you know, potential build out. Maybe you have some interest from some companies you know about or some letters of intent or some nibbles uh, on some of these parcels, particularly in your more strategic areas uh, that Catherine summarized and see what they're willing to do, they're willing to you know, take a shot at it at an application, but again, offline. So not, not a July deadline and then a December award you know, running through the rigors of the, of the normal funding process. So I think that's kind of uh, important going forward because again, it gives you more flexibility with that agency potentially. Maybe they wanna buy in earlier, you know, as you're getting ready uh, to put something in the ground for build out. Maybe they wanna wait and see if there are investments coming on the private sector side that they wanna take a bite at then, but at least you could have that discussion without taking your chances at a grant application, you know, with the rest of the state uh, by July 30th and then just waiting six months for an award. So Empire State Development, low hanging fruit. Um, I talked a little bit in the report about the Environmental Facilities Corporation. You know, that's the state's infrastructure bank, so to speak. So plenty of loan money if you wanna get on a list with projects, big dollar amounts and take their, take their bonded money. Um, I, I suspect you're probably not at your borrowing limits here. It's my assumption, given you're probably in pretty good fiscal shape as a town, which I hope is a, a, a compliment 
to the town and your bookkeeper folks. Um, so borrowing on your own, if you really had to, might might be a better option. The market rate market rates these days are pretty attractive without going through the state and all their add-on issuance costs and admin costs. But again, you know, sort of as a lender of last resort, uh, the Environmental Facilities Corp uh, is an option. Um, there are some grant sweeteners that they've infused into their programs. A little more focused on the water quality side, solving a problem with pressure or, you know, on-site septic systems for residential areas. Uh, so not so much just speculative expansion of, of your infrastructure. Um, but again, not necessarily impossible to obtain. And there is kind of a niche program through EFC uh, that does do industrial kind of type infrastructure to attract industry. It doesn't have a lot of takers um, and, it, and it can fund up to $10 million, a $10 million price tag. So that might be something more specialized that is worth looking at if you get one of these pods or one of these areas that, that you know, momentum is moving forward to really drive you getting stuff in the ground. Um, and then a, a kind of a third option uh, in some of my narrative, I talked about a program that you're, you're probably not that versed with because as a town, you're pretty healthy financially. Your demographics are, are strong here, uh, which again is a compliment. But the community development block grant program, um, if the town were inclined to try to help a specific business locate here, uh, or, or maybe run a program where you wanted to help create some incentives for startup businesses or what we call micro enterprises, five or fewer people um, who work actively in the business. Uh, and I don't mean a, a chain restaurant or something like that, something locally owned, you know, again, very small. Uh, there are some funds through that block grant program where you could run a program to provide grant money to individual startups or existing businesses. So not, not your nanotech, not anything really glamorous, but, but something maybe to, to do some homegrown business development. Um, and then on the, the block grant side has a, a bigger program where they will help a specific development, whether it be a, a resort hotel, you know, up, up in a resort area or, or something where a, a company is gonna come here and create 50, 50 or more jobs. And many of those may be held by lower moderate income people, which, which helps expand the workforce. Um, they do have some grant money that you can apply for, but then basically turn it over to the company for equipment, furnishings, you know, uh, machinery, maybe some infrastructure that would help that company. So it's more targeted to a specific firm locating here and expanding rather than just putting pipes and pump stations, you know, up and running to then get development to come in. So it's just, it's sort of the timing of things and how you look at the, how you define the project. Um, and last, I guess the Northern Border Regional Commission I'll highlight only because you are, Saratoga County is one of the 28 counties in New York that is considered a border county somehow, um, uh, which means it's competitive because you are among 28 counties in New York competing for that federal money, but they upped the amount this past round, which just went in a, a couple weeks ago, I think, for this year, uh, to a million dollar awards maximum, which is not, which would handle some of the things Catherine uh, scoped out. Um, here in Saratoga County would be at a 50-50. So you'd have to match that 50%. And again, you're waiting for an annual funding cycle, which just occurred um, a couple weeks ago. But because they upped it from 500,000 to a million, you know, it's a little healthier than it was before. Uh, and they do like transformational kind of things and you're doing that here. So I think you could be in play for that, at least to be competitive uh, in the future. So I know there were some other things uh, I, I wrote about a little bit, but more on the fringes. I think that's kind of the, um, the meat of what I wanted to summarize for you and I'm happy to take questions or um, you can go about your business. Yeah, a, a few questions, if, if you don't mind. Um, first, on the, uh, on the REDC process, that, that coming out of that, the, the regular schedule this year, is it a, a similar process, though, within the team? Is it the same team that you're, that you're working with? It was Mike Yevely used to, used to run the team. I don't know if he still is. 
yeah, I think he's still the capital region director. So he's still the, the chief yeah. staff and person. And Dillon under him and okay. folks like that. Great. Um, and then you're right, the Northern Border Regional Commission, that was just May 14th, that that funding, but that that is still relatively new for us. And I don't think there really is, there, I don't think there's really been a Saratoga County award for that yet. Um, I don't think there's we've re anyone has really even applied for it in Saratoga County successfully, to my knowledge. But that is a, a really great untapped resource that I'm, I'm hopeful that we're going to be able to get after in the future, because that's that's an exciting opportunity. Um, and there may be some CDBG opportunities in the future as the, as the county looks at, at new ways to, to, to chase that. Um, that uh, okay, that was helpful. Thank you. Yeah, and I, at Northern Border, I'd say you're right, untapped for Saratoga County. The, the overall pool was about four and a half, five million for the round. So asking for right. a million means you know, there could be four winners in New York uh, among 28 counties. But if right. the county hasn't put in one or any community in the county hasn't, you know, in terms of putting pins in the map, yeah. you know, I think you're right. So, can, can I ask a, one of the tricks here, of course, is to time this and, and, and roll it out? Um, it sounds like um, in some cases you would need you would need a district form right to to support the extension yeah yeah one other component of the study was um kind of looking at the legal issues and you really have i'll just take a step back so saratoga water services obviously it's a private company they don't have to follow any district formations um i did speak to them about their process and it, the process really is ask and they say sure we can provide you water and this is how much the connection fee will be um, it's a little easier, but then it's also a little bit more difficult in other ways. But they're not going to build on speculation. They will not build on speculation. Right. Um, it is possible from a water perspective to have a town water district for, say, you know, 10 parcels up Route 9. Um, that, you know, you'd build the infrastructure. It'd be a water district. You determine a cost per user. They, you know, and it would essentially be bonded. And then you would turn it over to the private water company for operation. Um, or you know, again, if we needed to expand for the area one, the route 67 West expand water, um, you would just be going through an expansion of the Clifton Park Water Authority. But again, we're not recommending that. Um, Saratoga Water Authority, again, I said, you know, that there needs to be an actual, you know, customer. Um, you could form a town water district to serve whatever parcels and build infrastructure from county water. Uh, just like Boston, you know. Uh, I thought I thought that there was a concept of having a transportation company in the park to handle that. If that's the case, um, you know, but if it was a public water district or sewer district, you know, there are different ways. Right. Um, and just to clarify, the town of Malta is within the Saratoga mm -hmm. County Sewer District number one. So if any of these projects you chose to form, say, a smaller separate district, uh, I think you're aware that CTML was the town engineer for Bals and your neighbor forever. Um, we did work for the town to develop two sewer districts, Bals Lake Sewer. Probably heard of it, <laughs> um, and actually a smaller one up by behind the old Decabelli is the neighborhood back there, um, and that will be a town sewer town sewer district that they will tax, um, engineer, and build the sewer lines, and then um, turn over that infrastructure to Saratoga County, but say for 20 or 30 years of the bond, the town will still tax the residents. So the residents will see a tax to the town of Alton for the sewer district, and they'll see an O&M cost to county. So there is a way to form, you know, special districts. Um, you know, there's a process, there's map plans and reports, there's public hearings, um, you know. Yes, Mr. I got Moore. a question for sure. you. Sure. Um, earlier on, you stated the fact that you could form a water district, bond it, and turn it over to a water company. Yep, that's in the appendix written by our legal uh, subconsultant. Um, she goes through the whole process of doing that. That is explained in full. Hmm? It is explained. It is. It's a process, <laughs> um, but it's explained the process to go ahead and do that. Okay. Otherwise, this could get a long discussion also. The so. thing is, a lot of these, you know, I'm sure any engineer, you know, professional who's worked in forming 
water and sewer districts knows it's, it's not as simple as it sounds. It can be simple, but that relies on the town, the municipality, and all the residents generally to be supporting of it. Yeah. Um, which kind of for economic development, you know, it's a little bit, again, more speculative. Um, you know, but again, it's possible whether it's practical is, you know, up for discussion, I think. Um, I think when we examined it in Malteville, uh, we had an issue with the town bonding it, having their hands in it, and turning it over to a private entity. But that was just quite nothing. It, it was just us very heavily in that. Yes, just because it's, I'd say, legal to do or possible does not always mean that you people are interested, yeah. to be honest. Um, you know, okay. so, um, you know, you. again, all really good questions. Again, I think the emphasis is going to be that there's likely some potential future development in these corridors of from when associates sees demand, you know, they're not just saying, oh, there's demand just to say it. They're seeing it forecasted. You're seeing it in the past few months of news. Um, the question is, you know, does the town desire to expand the infrastructure, you know, for these businesses? But at a minimum, the study tells you, someone comes in and says, hey, I want to develop pod five. Great. This is what you need to do. <laughs> the CD mails <laughs> looked at it from everything. Um, again, their use might be slightly different, but you know the ranges of flows we use were, were quite. You know, some people are going to look at this and go, "Oh my God, that's a lot of water and sewer." But we took the worst case with the zoning and the maximum building size. Realistically, I like to say it's probably somewhere in the middle. You know, I, I can. Um, I Kevin provided us with a Kevin and Jamie both with a list of comments on the structure. Was that shared with with yeah. them? I mean, in particular, one of them that stood out is, is um, the general age of the existing infrastructure is not addressed. And do we just. I can uh, update that. Um, generally speaking, the infrastructure is not old. OK. Um, Saratoga Water says infrastructure is in very good condition. Clifton Park Water is, you know, less than 20 years old. Mm -hmm. the, the trunk sewer is 70. 475. I'm trying to think of the manholes as I go on the bike path when I go by with my kids. But they're doing lining projects. You know, the infrastructure in this area is good. Yeah. You hear Troy, Amsterdam, all the right. disconnected. That's you old. Know. <laughs> um, yeah, I was looking at, let's say, capacity. Is it there? Um, the right. physical infrastructure, we don't need to replace, you know, a mile of old, old sewer. You know, we might need to upgrade a pump station. But I can I can elaborate on that more in the final report. I mean, that that that's good for me. I mean, it makes sense anyway. Yep. Um, the other thing is, is this very first comment, and I believe this is true, that that property at 967 in the bypass is not addressed, and they're actively marketing that parcel. Correct. I mean, they have been, so. Yep, it's had that sign up for a while now. Yeah. Um, and I, again, I encourage you to read through the Kamoin report that they do actually tell you why that's not like okay. development. I yeah, did read the come on report, but I don't remember now. Yeah. I've seen that sign for 10 years. Why isn't anyone developing it? Which um, parcel? It, there's a couple the the, the motel. The Stone and Gate. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. That's what it's called. Yep. Yeah. Well, the whole the whole corner is prime. If I, I was thinking it's kind of prime for development with uh Round Lake Bypass there going right. into the tech park. You got all four corners vacant. Except for maybe one corner is in the village. One corner is right. in the village. Yeah, yeah. yeah the south. There's been some yeah. projects corner. proposed there that they, that the folks there weren't happy with. So, as far as uh, next steps, like uh, Cynthia mentioned, Jamie and I provided comments to Catherine to address in the final report. We encourage you to provide us comments as well. Say within next week or so, we'll have to get the final report finalized um and then there's a uh i think it's like called a presentation that has to happen uh with new york state reviewing our report making sure everything was uh done in accordance with what we our scope was and then we go from there um so i would anticipate you know i think our grant said we would complete the process by the end of july so you know we're kind of right on target right now so did that factor in COVID also? Uh, or it, is that a 
deadline that was I think the deadline was already there. I think we had said it was going to be probably 18 month. So, yep. but I had spoken to him early on when um, CT mail didn't really get the authorization to proceed until September. I said, Hey, you know, we might need some more months on the back end uh, right. in since, uh, since COVID, but right now we seem to be on, on schedule. So. Um, and just to clarify, I know Kevin and Darren kind of asked me, and I know that's the next presentation, so I'll stay for that, is, is any of this eligible for the federal money? Um, we kind of massaged what was there um, and kind of felt that the federal money was for, for sewer and water was more your classic drinking water and clean water state revolving fund projects um, that, you know, really look at serving existing areas that have those issues. And, you know, there are limitations for economic development. So at this point, you know, we're not making any recommendations that any of that pot of money coming, but you know, your other engineer definitely, I'm sure has other projects that would fit better than, than these. These are, I think, a definitely a different arena from my perspective as a traditional water and sewer engineer, that these are definitely economic development projects. So, but I, you know, mentioned well, that we did look at it, but determined that we just weren't comfortable. Recommending. I mean, it's good to have this on the shelf, right? In case the federal infrastructure bill that's being kicked around, yes. you know, has a, you know, a category for economic development. Correct. So, so yeah, a lot of it, people like people like that know I do this ask, well, what do you think about the infrastructure money? And I'm like, <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> I always support infrastructure money, but the details aren't there yet. They're just, they're, they're Look, not let's there see some of for it. us to say. <laughs> You know, um, but you mean it's not a social program, right? I have no comment. <laughs> Anything that can get my projects from an engineering perspective funded is 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 good. So um, again, you know, I definitely welcome comments. Um, you know, I think I'll, this was definitely a very interesting project, very different than a normal water and sewer study. Um, so again, I hope this is something the town of Malta can use. You know, definitely. You know, even if it's not the same exact project, you at least have a basis. Um, it might save a potential, you know, commercial developer time that they don't have to go through these nine months of trying to get an answer to the county about their mm -hmm. sewer system, um, that they can actually use it, um, you know, to start. But it does tell you, tell you that actually the infrastructure is there. You know, I did not identify a lot of projects, which for you guys is great that you really don't have an issue with lack of water and sewer in the town of Malta. The issue with water is that you kind of, have a conundrum of different water sources, private, public, authority, and not, but you know that. <laughs> I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Yeah, really, really nice job. This is going to be a tremendous help to us as we move forward. Thanks so much. And yeah, we'll look over it. We'll have some more comments and then we'll be in touch. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank you again. Okay, uh, the next um, kind of presentation is the, you know, it's a kind of a segue that we were talking about the federal funding, because this next one is, you know, the federal funding and, you know, what we can kind of do with it. Um, the purposes of, of putting it on the agenda tonight was not to have, you know, the board decide anything um, uh, specifically or definitively. Um, we still don't have all the details. Uh, Kevin's been you know, listening to presentations and talking to the Association of Towns and, you know, attorneys uh, affiliated with them. And, and basically their recommendation is, you know, move slowly here. You, you don't want to get involved with, uh, you know, committing resources and then finding out that some of the small print, print wasn't complied with and we're not going to get our money from the American Rescue Fund. So, um, you know, we have some ideas of what we can do with it. And we sent that out to the board. And, you know, the purpose of of this conversation now is to, you know, the board can look at these, decide, you know, what questions we might have. Uh, Sean Doty is available for uh, questions concerning, you know, some of the engineering aspects of some of these ideas. Well, I guess my, my first question is, um, some of these I, I, I thought were things that we already did, right? The meeting room technology upgrades, old post road improvements, they're either things that we did or we're planning on doing, correct? The uh, meeting room technology, no, uh, not, not what we're talking about. The meeting room technology, I mean, we've kind of put together something that, you know, enables us to do what we've done. We're going full hologram? Kind of acceptable. Yeah. Full hologram? Oh, yeah. Okay. Full hologram. <laughs> We're going to have a transporter in here. These aren't the droids you're looking for? All right. 
I, I mean, that's one thing that I do think, you know, because, you know, this may not, I mean, who knows what the future is going to bring? Who knows what's going to happen next winter? And we may be back into needing more virtual stuff and, and we can get more people. So, uh, you know, we have Darren's list, a couple of other things that I just wondered. Um, but how about, how about ventilation improvements to, to our own buildings? Like, um, you know, particularly this building in the court, I know probably you need some, I mean, the court we know needs lots of improvements. Is, is that money available for, for some improvements to, to basically the court building or, or this building to encourage, um, you know, better social distancing if, if we go back into to hiding? Is that, you know, just some ideas throwing out there? I, I think there's a real good chance that ventilation improvements could fit into the American Rescue uh, Plan. Can, can I, I'm always slow on the uptake here to, you know, understand the concept. The page one here is other than the meeting room technology is to um, essentially fund things that we had committed to fund and um, we were short of revenue on or what is the rest of page one other than the 70,000? What does that represent? It represents, um, basically it's following, there's four categories in this okay. bill, okay? This, the majority of page one falls into the lost revenues category. Okay, in which you do a calculation four times. The first one was, was done as of 1231-2020, and there was a calculation of lost revenues. They, they allowed you for a 4.1% growth over 2019. So if you were below, below that, you're having, you got a uh, revenue loss. And that category is very broad as to what you could spend it on. Um, if you recall our 2021 budget, we, we sliced road improvements by about $200,000, $200, okay? We were trying to find ways to uh, fund drainage improvement projects. Uh, so, and then certain vehicles, we were unable to put money into reserves. We still can't do that, but we could purchase a vehicle that we know is coming up in this, that type of money. Okay. The other large pot of money, you know, is another pot is this water and sewer in broadband category, as uh, Catherine mentioned, and I concur and Darren concurs, you know, you really, we can't go for economic development. Okay. You know, even we even looked at it just, I asked Catherine, if we go route nine North would 50% of that capacity be for existing people up there that, you know, are on wells or on septics. Cause then we could possibly make an argument. We're not making those arguments. Um, so the other category within there that we're seeing is stormwater. Mm -hmm. Stormwater is part of the sewer side of things. So that's why we're looking at, you know, uh, the you know, Luther Forest drainage that's, or problems. That could come out of a whole, you know, whole set for uh, allocation of money. You know, it's 1.8 that you could have into four different pots. We get to decide which pot it Yes, to, we okay, do. Okay. The problem, you know, I don't know what, how Malta and Saratoga County is going to fare in 2021, two and three. Okay. With we respect be, to what? We might not have revenue losses. It, okay. it all depends on how things revive. What does that have to do with the 1.8 that's available now? Because, you know, it's, it's because if you're, if you're only limited, say we only have one revenue loss year, which is 2020. Great. $700,000 is that dollar amount of the 1.8. I did not know that. The, the one eight is covered three years going forward. The one eight is our allocation that we are gonna get. To cover a three year period. It's, it's not to cover a three year period. It's just the town of Malta is getting $1.8 million from the federal government for the American Rescue Plan. But if okay. we bounce back, we only get one year. We only get revenue when we're not. We only can use that category we can only use okay. that category. We still have the 1.8, but that category isn't there for us. The lost revenue category, the, of the four categories category. that you yeah. identified. Okay. okay, so that's why, you know, as we're looking at projects. So there's a it, timing component then. Right. It, there is a timing component, but you have to, you have to have it committed 
as of 2024, spent by 2026. So it sounds like we should commit on lost revenue. Well, we know there's lost revenue. Well, you can only commit up to right. that certain dollar amount anyway. Right. So, and, and we'll get, you know, like Darren said, everybody I'm hearing is you don't rush into it. Okay. Right. Uh, take our time. There's a lot of guidance that has not been issued. Okay. Right. I don't know per se, are they going to make this subject the single audit requirements? Okay. That you'll have to comply with all the federal rules with federal money. Okay. And if you start thinking about those, there's like, eight to 10 general rules. One of, one of them relates to procurement, okay? Have you followed the federal procurement guidelines as opposed to the, the state and the town? Because there's requirements under federal procurement to make sure certain clauses are in your contracts. Well, if we are gonna jump in and piggyback onto the county blacktop bid, okay? And pave some roads, well, we gotta make sure we have a supplemental addendum to that saying, okay, you agree that you'll be, you will comply with the Davis Bacon Act and a whole four or five other contract provisions. So that's a giant boondoggle. What's yeah. the easiest way? It's <laughs> all a boondoggle, John. Right no, now. I mean, if we've <laughs> got if we've got items of expense that qualify in this lost revenue category that that we can fund and expend quickly, right? That reduces our risk that we're going to be further boondoggled is that spend it quickly but in accordance with the parameters that are set forth including those boondoggle issues you know just because you say it's a revenue loss you still have to comply with the federal procurement standards okay so so what you're saying is we don't know yet whether like davis bacon is going to apply yeah to any of these expenses Right now, it has not officially been finalized. The, I sat in on a luncheon webinar, and the lady, oh. the attorney kept saying, proceed very slowly and cautiously. You're not even going to get your money until maybe July, more probable in August, your first distribution. They're going to send us the money in advance, and then we're going to figure out how to spend it out. Half of it. Okay. Half of it in <laughs> advance. <laughs> Only the federal government could come up with something. Well, the state holds that. But I mean, right? what do you advise? Yeah, the, state, the state holds it. It doesn't come to our bank. No, I, I think the state has to. They have to I give it to us. They but... have to distribute it by August. There's a certain time frame that once the feds give the, the state the money, they got to send it to the municipalities. The state can't hold it. They can't hold it for 30 days and collect the interest? <laughs> It's something like that. It's just about that. And they might get a 30 day extension, but that's it. I said, after that, it's got to go out to the municipalities. All right. So we, we've, uh, we don't even understand the full extent of the rules to this game we're about to play. That's correct. What do you, what do you advise that we do? I mean, I, what, what is your recommendation, Kevin, as controller? I recommend not spending anything right now. Okay, I, I recommend that we get, there's going to be some question and answer guidance that's issued on this 110, uh, what was 150, 120, 150, 150 page, page, page document, okay, which they said we'll issue further guidance throughout it later on. So we need further guidance. It's not, it's not there yet. This came out uh, two weeks ago, I think. So uh, they're having webinars all the time about it and we'll continue to educate. But in the meantime, we're trying to become knowledgeable of what we can spend money on based upon the categories they have. And it seems like, you know, if we do have a stormwater project out there, that's going to fall into a nice bucket over here that we could utilize. And and keep in mind, stormwater, as I kept researching, can also mean like a vacuum truck. Now, if Roger has a need for a vacuum truck or an one of his street sweepers aging, you know, it's on 15 years and he's going to have to get it in five years. Well, that's under the storm water guidelines. So I think you guys think of, think about what we've developed, what other projects might, you might be interested in. Is a Zamboni storm water? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on if the ice rink, uh, <laughs> so Kevin, the, utilities go down the Hartzell ice rink, that's <laughs> yeah. not. So, so this first page that, that we got, 
Do you think that those are all things that we can attribute to a lost revenue? I would be, I would move, be moving Luther Forest drainage improvements into the water and sewer. Okay. Okay. Water and sewer bucket. Okay. Uh, the rest of those would be classified into the lost revenue categories. So well, six, hey, Kevin, six, we had Luther Forest drainage divided between one and yeah. the other. You would, you would take all of it and put it into the second yeah. one? Because oh, we, okay. we have, and we can, any expenditure incurred after March 3rd, 2021 is eligible. Okay. So Luther Forest drainage improvements, they did start, but it was after March 31st, and they will continue for next year, possibly the following year, dependent, dependent on our funding strategy. And then there's also not on this list. I, I've heard of a, a problem with uh, another uh, neighborhood drainage area. Autumn run. Autumn run. Mm -hmm. You know, that would fall into another bucket. So, so, so how about old post road improvements? Now, that was obviously something that we were pursuing and we yeah. were going to pay for those ourselves. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about possibly we're, what saving our $200,000 that was going to be the town share? Is that we that's could. in that's in mitigation money, so right? No, we're we we had mitigation monies, but then we also had a town, town share, share because only mitigation could only fund part the of the project of that 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 further development costs. Okay, the existing problems there were already our costs. The the project isn't there's no federal funds involved, so that the procurement isn't federal compliant as it is. uh currently for no there are no federal funds okay. in old post road my request to have sean here was to get a handle on the you know the storm water drainage issues here um you know i at one time felt like i had a handle on it and then i hear bits and pieces of information and it, it sounds like things are evolving um so that was why i asked that he be here to you know tell us where we're at with um, stormwater drainage in the context or, or to help us understand how that might fit in with this pot of money. Yeah, I briefed, I briefed Sean on uh, Friday. I think he's probably available to Zoom. Yeah, he's here. I'm here. Okay, so what, you know, what, what my questions are, are where are we at with finishing up country knolls? Um, you know, how much work is left? How much is it going to cost to finish that up? What progress have we made in Luther Forest? Um, you know, I've spoken to Roger and he described that there have been some engineering issues that presented because of uh, over time utilities have been installed and that there had to be some uh, rethinking about the engineering approach. And it, it sounds like, um, you, you know, there, it's not as straightforward to do some of the areas as it was hoped. And, you know, I, I want to understand, um, you, you know, what the plan is now um, to, to both finish country knolls and to go forward with the work that needs to be done in Luther Forest to, you know, address the drainage priorities in there. How much is the number now that there have been engineering issues that have come up? So that's a long question, but that's kind of what I I'm, would like to know. Sure. No, thanks for the question. Uh, country knows I'll let Roger speak to because we haven't had much besides chatting with Roger to do with uh, country knolls. Um, so if Roger's still on, I'll let him speak to that. Um, certainly I can speak to Luther Forest. Uh, we were asked in the fall of 2019 to essentially lay out a series of dry wells in locations throughout Luther Forest where there have been historic drainage problems. And in that effort, uh, we collected existing utility information via GPS locating device based on what's called a design markout by calling dig safe. Um, so we collected the information, essentially shoehorns additional dry wells in at 16 or 17 locations on a, an ortho image, you know, aerial mapping. 
um, that work was intended to start, as I recall it, in the spring of 2020, and that got held up a year because of COVID. Um, so fast forward to this spring, they went to install the first, we'll call set of it. As I understand, there's been $90,000 allocated or intended to be over a two year period. So the first $90,000 that was allocated and Evolution, the town's contractor was able to get in 10 of the total of 28 structures in uh, for the whole project. And I think what's been spent to date is about $60,000. So, so far rather efficient in my opinion at $6,000 a structure. Uh, however, there were changes on the fly, which was somewhat expected because this was not a traditional design, right? This was, uh, utility information overlaid on ortho imagery um, because when UFPO, all the utility vendors went out to mark out for construction, they marked out much more utilities than were mar marked out for the design mark out, right? So what was thought to be available space was, was not actually available space. Um, so that's item number one. Item number two is you asked what additional cost there might be in Luther Forest, sort of where are we? Well, there's there's two locations in particular that I understand as the most uh, challenging from a uh, historic drainage standpoint. Um, problems lasting in the neighborhood for over 30 years. One of them is at Thimbleberry next to Ermine Lair. Uh, that location, when we went to go actually install uh, the drywells that were intended to be there, we had the utility conflict. And on top of that, because the contractor was there, we ran a perk test, sort of a what I'll call a poor man's perk test towards the bottom of that infiltration intended in infiltration device and found a bit slower soils than we were hoping for uh, in the area. The topography leading to that area too is sort of, for lack of a better term, a bowl. So the reason that there's his historic drainage issues in that location is because A, it's a bowl, bowl, and then in the frozen ground conditions in the highest storm events, the water's got nowhere to go because it can't infiltrate well. Uh, but, you know, as I understand it throughout the summer, even with flashy storms, it generally subsides in a reasonable amount of time. Someone can correct me if I'm wrong about that. So in that location, what we've talked to Roger about doing instead is a traditional uh, piping catch basin and piping um, project that could outfall stormwater out of that bowl, but we would have to bring it into the lands of uh, the tech campus and we would have to get easements to do that and permission to do that. And so that I think is something that the town should consider. Um, and we could put a concept we've sketched out a quick concept we can put a concept together as well as a uh, cost estimate for that if you're thinking about how to use the American Rescue Plan funds you might have to excuse my daughter my four and a half year old daughter just walked in um, the other location is uh, at Wineberry and that one is at 276 Wineberry we we're actually able to get uh, three dry wells in that location but again it has that sort of bowl location uh, in condition there. So that's another location where we should think about potentially outfalling outside of the bowl so that in those uh, conditions where you have frozen ground, you know, winter storm, the ones that cause the most havoc, you'd have a much better ability to get rid of the water. I and, see. you know, to speak to the remaining locations, uh, we'd have to look at those in more detail to see where we can still fit in dry wells or if there's other uh, ways to address the situation. Roger did discuss with us a, an idea of using infiltrators under the roadway that has been done in the past where you use uh, sort of horizontally laid chambers rather than um, vertically laid dry wells to spread over a flatter and higher area, the infiltration capacity. And so those areas could be looked at for that as well. Can, can we get, you know, like a two page narrative description of this with numbers associated so that I, um, th those yes. of us, uh, yeah. And I mean, the, the concern, and I'm sure you guys are thinking this way too, is money being limited, we want to put our money where it's most um, impactful, right? And, and not necessarily do the easy stuff that's going to have, you know, uh, an effect, but not really affect the most severe problems we have. Yep. Um, 
you know, even though it looks tricky for some of these areas, those are the areas that are most acute, right? So we want to deal with them as opposed to just doing the easy stuff where you're not going to really get as much of a benefit. So that, that that's kind of what I'm thinking. And um, I appreciate your presentation and look forward to receiving something in writing on it. Yeah, certainly we can put together a sort of progress memo as well as some recommendations within the same. I think that'd be a very easy way for you guys to sort of uh, catch up to where Roger and we are. Thank you. And, and Sean, I will just to add to that, I, I, I am really impressed to, to hear this because when we first started talking about this, we it sounded like it was going to be a lot more expensive and a lot longer fix. So to hear the progress that you guys have made and kudos to, to Roger and his team and, and, and to all of you for, for fixing this or, or getting us much closer to being fixed than we were before. Um, this has been a big, big problem for an awful long time. Great, great work. I uh, appreciate that, but it, it will. I know we're not there yet. I know yeah, we're not there yet. It will <laughs> caution you and say the two hard pipe solutions, you know, have long runs. The, the first one's probably 1,500 feet. It will be expensive. Yep. Uh, and that's at Thimbleberry near Ermine Layer. And, um, you know, less expensive probably will be the Wineberry Bowl condition. Um, so, we won't, we won't take the compliments yet. We'll put it that way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, we're, we're, we're we'll hold them in reserve. Some, yeah. Yeah. We're talking about some big numbers to do yeah. this whole, this whole thing. Yeah. And, and, and the approach so far was to, you know, sort of mitigate, but not eliminate, right. Uh, the, the historic drainage issues there sort of help um, the conditions out there, you, you know, maybe to put it in perspective, Today, that subdivision would not be designed the way it was 30 years ago with mm -hmm. just dry wells over that expanse. And especially right. with the low lying areas in a few spots that has no relief from topography, right? Um, dry wells are discouraged in the New York State Stormwater Design Manual for roadway use, largely because they get sediment laden very quickly, get blinded and are not great at infiltrating anymore, right? So they have no quote, pretreatment ability to catch sediment before them, uh, therefore uh, preserving the, their infiltration capacity. And so the intent two years ago when we first started this was generally to sort of um, bolster them by providing additional infiltration capacity adjacent to them and using the existing structure that was largely blinded, but yet had still some infiltration capacity as the sediment chamber and using the new adjacent structure to do the infiltrative work, right? But even that was not gonna be a fix, you know, um, that was gonna be helpful and mitigate the, uh, some of the flooding issues, but wouldn't fix them, right? And any, just while I'm on the air here, any stormwater management project won't quote fix stormwater for all conditions, right? Even a hard pipe solution is going to have capacity limits and times might have some standing water for a while. So I always make sure I say these things so that people understand because it's, it's uh, stormwater systems can't be designed for every storm event to manage every storm event because they are dynamic, of course. All right. Fair enough. Thank you very much, Sean. We appreciate that. That helps us a lot. And uh, I, I think we all agree that the drainage um, problems at uh, Luther Forest are, are huge and a big priority for us. So thanks very much, Sean. Okay. Glad to help. And I'm going to sign off unless you think you all need right. me for something else. Okay. Any other um, comments, discussion on this? We'll be looking, we'll be looking for um, Sean's input on this. We'll circulate it to the board. Um, and we'll continue to keep track of uh, new guidance as they come out uh, from Treasury. And hopefully we'll have something, some more information in two weeks when we meet again. Okay, uh, next item on the agenda is the comments announcements from town board members. Does anyone on the board have anything that they want to announce or comment on? Just have a couple uh, really quick things, Darren. Um, all the uh, staff and, and town board members uh, to receive these uh, Fancy new Malta Works masks. Uh, timing was impeccable. They came in just as the uh, mask mandate was lifted uh, uh, statewide. But uh, these were part at, at the tail end of the Malta Works promotion uh, as part of a Global Foundries Town of Malta uh, grant um, to uh, to help out our, our Malta businesses as we were uh, coming to, uh, through the end of the the uh, the worst of uh, of the the COVID uh, uh, the COVID pandemic. Um, so these being distributed to Malta businesses as they're as they're needed. Um, and uh, everybody should have gotten one in their in their folder and got them out to 
to our, our staff members as well. Um, and uh, that is uh, all I had. All right. Thank you, Tim. Anyone else? Just a quick reminder, Darren, uh, for folks listening, uh, we have the bulk pickup, or I should say drop off, excuse me, at the right here at the town hall. And that is June 9th and 12th, 9 to 3. I encourage people to check out the town's webpage for all the particulars, gives you what you can and cannot bring and drop off here. And uh, is that June 5th? Yeah, June 5th, June 5th, 5th and 12th. I'm sorry. Okay. From 9 a.m. Yes, from yeah. 9. 9 to 3. And Thanks, if, Mark. If past history is anything, you don't need to rush over here at 9. Right. They were pretty much lined up at 9 o'clock, but it cleared out quick. And then by, you know, 11 o'clock, it was easy to drive up and throw it in. So, like yeah. I said, don't rush over here at yeah, 9 o'clock and get in line. Or And don't arrive here at 8 o'clock and get in line. And don't arrive here at 8 o'clock yeah. and get in line. There's yeah. plenty of capacity. Yeah. <laughs> later today. So. Okay, just one uh, item to kind of toss out to the board. Um, it, it, you know, we're going to get $7,100 from the uh, county um, uh, for uh, projects that we deem useful. And one of the things that um, Kevin and I were thinking about is a possible uh, use of that for engineering costs to um, put a, a street crossing on Route 9 north of here. Um, close to the community center, but far, en far enough away so that the curve in Route 9 isn't a problem, uh, Refuge Island and, and rapid flashing beacons, just because of you know problems in terms of walkability getting across Route 9. So that's an idea that we wanted to just toss out to the board. You know, It's not as if you have to make a decision on it tonight, but you know, hopefully it's something that we can think about. Well, I will say I don't need to think about it because that would vastly improve my quality of life. <laughs> um, so I'm all for it. Yeah. I, I like that idea a lot as well. And I, I will say um, I have been a, a convert to uh, uh, Cynthia's advocacy around the, the flashing beacons. I know the, the one that we did with the with complete streets down here on the lower end of nine, um, I think has been very, very effective. And um, I know I've heard from, our, our new business, uh, uh, Active Ingredient Brewing, they have already commented to me a number of times that pedestrians are using that regularly and that it, it's very, very effective. So I think anything that we can do like that to improve walkability and pedestrian safety is great. Is, is Darren, the money um, potentially uh, unregulated? It's to our discretion to use it as we see fit? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, well yeah, correct. right. Right, economic development, but but it's pretty open. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. Comments or questions from town residents? I see Kathy. You have your hand up, Kathy. Kathy Eitzman. The way this, Kathy. All right, before we hear from you, Kathy, how about um, uh, now? Can you hear me? That, how about department heads? Do, do we have anything from department heads before we get to town residents? OK, Kathy, I think you're with us now. Go ahead. OK, great. Uh, yeah. Hey, I was so glad to see the mask mandate being lifted. Um, I've had seniors that are now developing respiratory problems from having their mask on for so long. So glad to see that that's going to be starting to be in effect. And we're out there, we're active. We have a luncheon planned for June the 7th with 83 seniors going. So that's about it. Okay, thanks very much, Kathy, appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Could you step up to the lectern so we can hear you? Thanks. Uh, good evening, my name is uh, Tom Minnick. I live at 19 Forest Brook Drive in Boston Lake. I'm actually, I'm a resident of the town of Boston. I live, our neighborhood is just across uh, the East Line Road uh, line. Uh, over a year ago, I stood before you uh, in this room and uh, I was promoting a small sidewalk project, a continuation of the blacktop path uh, that was originally built uh, with the roundabouts 
but it ended at Carlisle Court. Uh, and I was uh, promoting the continuance of it down to uh, the corner of Round Lake Road and East Line Road. Uh, a second part of the project was on my side of the town, the Boston side, since my 200 plus neighborhood was so close to East Line Road. I've also talked to the uh, Boston Town Board about a sidewalk from our neighborhood down to East Line Road to connect with what I was promoting uh, to uh, you folks as well. I came tonight to report uh, a little progress. The town of Boston has established a sidewalk committee. I happen to be one of the three members of it. And uh, at uh, tomorrow's uh, town board meeting in Boston, the sidewalk committee will report on three projects that we've uh, developed. And the one I'm reporting on is one of them. So I just wanted you to know there's some progress going on on the Boston side. Uh, I will continue to return and uh, both here and with the Boston Town Board to uh, promote this little project uh, as a you know, inter-town cooperative effort. It would give uh, our 200 plus uh, home, homeowners and residents in our neighborhood a safe and direct shot down to the Hannaford Plaza area and its businesses. And of course, with the existing sidewalk system from the roundabout projects, straight under the Northway down to the, to the village of Round Lake to the Zim Smith Trail. Uh, I know I've, I've read there's a lot of walkability discussions going on, both in Walta and in Boston. And of course, I think this works very well into that. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Okay, thanks for coming. Appreciate hearing from you. Any questions from board members? Okay, anyone else? Yes, Mike, welcome. Good evening, I'm Mike Williams. I'm a resident of the town of Malta. Uh, the reason why I'm here is like, I've been out in the neighbor, different neighborhoods in, in the town, talking to different residents, and there's a concern about the town's um, town vehicles. They're, they're concerned whether the, the vehicles are look getting older or whether they're wondering if the vehicles are getting maintenance right on a regular basis. Um, are they getting inspected so that the town employees can drive safe vehicles so they can do the work of the township. Thanks. And, and, you know, I, I, I think the answer to that is, well, we'd always like to have newer vehicles and everything, but I, I think our people are doing a pretty good job of keeping up with what we have. And yeah, we've been, you know, making reserves and we're hopefully going to use some of this uh, American rescue fund money to um, make a couple of purchases along those lines. We have a, uh, a vehicle in our building and planning, for example, that's, uh, you know, reached the end of its life for all intents and purposes. And we're looking to replace that. You know, we've got, uh, you know, we're looking to possibly do a, a, a vehicle for our maintenance department. They need a dump truck. Um, Is there a, like a um, yearly or every five or 10 year plan on replacing vehicles or? I think we go according to useful life and reserve for it, right, Kevin? I mean. Right. So there's a document, Mike, you know, which could be made available to you for, you know, the highway stuff. Is there something in particular that residents are concerned with some, some vehicle in particular or uh, some... not necessarily. It's just that okay. um, the vehicles are starting to look old and, um, you know, we definitely well, every vehicle has to be inspected yeah. annually if it's going to be driven on a, the state right. of new york roads so well, well, i'd sure like we, to i'm think sure we just, comply with that yeah right. yeah well i've been advised that there's some vehicles that aren't inspected that, so. that don't have the re, a required state inspection correct did, did they give you a plate number or anything no, they didn't give me a plate number so <laughs> okay I mean, so, just because things look old doesn't mean that they're that's, not that's reliable. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all getting up there in, in age, John. <laughs> I, 
I, I don't have a lot of grades. I'll but, arm wrestle yeah, you if you give me a head start. <laughs> <laughs> so you said there's a document that states there's a capital plan for the highway equipment purchases, which we try to follow. Okay. But that doesn't, you know, if somebody has specifics that we're not registering a vehicle and that it's not, you know, following well, registration the law, we, is different in the inspection. Yeah, we so. need to know that, right? So, so well, well, that was their concern. And I mean, as long as we're following the right procedures and making sure, you know, the vehicles are being, you uh, maintenance and uh, our employees are being safe with the vehicles and ensuring their safety and the citizens of the town. That's the main thing. So yeah, I, I think they are. I think we have a, a pretty good safety record. Okay. Uh, All right, great. Okay. Building and planning department. Did someone didn't pass inspection? Yeah. It's taken off the road. Okay. All right. It's been passed, it's off the road and it's been replaced. So I'd be surprised if we had another, you know, a vehicle out there that keeps running with a failed inspection. Okay. And do we need to buy another vehicle for that, yeah. that vehicle? Okay. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Yep. Right. Okay. Thank All you, right. Mike. Thank you. Anyone else? Would anyone else like to comment to the board? Woody, can you step up to the lectern, Woody? Sorry, I should have called you judge. Woody yeah, Slow yeah. from Judge. Uh, Homestead <laughs> Commons. Just on the inspections and registrations, because of COVID, those things were extended. So I, I don't think we have anybody that's uh, any of our town vehicles that are illegal that are now there. Those things were extended twice. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other comments? Any other hands raised there? Jamie, I don't see any on my screen. Okay, um, we have one action item on for tonight, and that is to set a uh, the date for a public hearing on the exercise of eminent domain, the implementation of the eminent domain procedure law um, regarding a, a sliver of property on Old Post Road so that we can continue with that project to make that intersection safer. Um, this resolution um, would uh, set a public hearing uh, under the uh, EDPL for Monday, June 7th, two weeks from tonight. I'd move it for discussion. Second. Discussion. Is uh, the um, property owner has, we're required to make offers, right? And uh, based on appraised values, and we've made those offers and the property owner is unwilling to accept them. Is that where we're at? We made the offer. We've been in extensive conversation with them over over a and long period of time, and it, it, it it's gotten delayed um, for one reason or another. And uh, you know, we have not been able to come to terms. And okay. the the uh, uh, you know the latest installment of the offer was just communicated to them today, um, based on the appraisal that we've had and we've been talking to them about for a while. So. How, how much is, I mean, what are we, what's the appraised value of the property? 17,000. 17,000. Okay. How many acres is this? It's a tiny, it's, it's just a sliver, you know, it's, it's a sliver so that we can have that, that, that um, lane on the south side of old 3,380 square feet. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> just to follow up on Darren's uh, comments, the, there's been numerous, uh, there's been general agreement that they were going to um, donate the land to the town. Um, we're still trying to accomplish that, but we've reached hopefully not an insurmountable impasse. And the purpose, uh, as I understand it is to, as a fallback, not delay the project so that we can get it done right. during the building period. Right. We're still um, even right before the meeting tonight, um, communicating with their attorney to, to see if there's an alternative so that the board doesn't have to go down that route. But we're really sort of up against the wall here for accomplishing the project. Yeah, I hear you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, the next um, general item is to discuss the uh, items that are gonna be on the agenda in two weeks from tonight. Um, uh, the first item on that will be the ambulance district map plan and report. 
um, one of the plans that uh, um, you know, if if the town board chooses to to follow this path, um, I, I would recommend that we put this out for a vote to let the um, residents of Malta decide. You know, we've been uh, uh, through the town laws sections with a fine tooth comb, uh, and Steve has been researching the cases and trying to find out a. Uh, uh, an ex a, a clear way that we're supposed to proceed when we have something like this. Unfortunately, the law is not as clear as it as it should be. Um, uh, but my sense is that the best way to proceed is to, if the board wants the a vote on this is to put this out for a vote on, on the general election November second. Um, a vote participated on by the electors, not necessarily by the property owners, but. Um, so a, a draft resolution, you know, uh, you know, being uh, circulated uh, for two weeks from tonight is available for the town board. Any other discussion of that item? A, a couple of things, if I could, please. Uh, one is, I think, and again, as I've illustrated numerous times tonight, my memory isn't always that clear, <coughs> um, that you mentioned that you'd been in touch with the mayor of Round Lake about the village's intentions to participate or not. But I don't remember whether we've got an official response from the village as to whether they will opt in or out of a district if it goes forward. Yeah, um, Gary, I think the, the, the official response is yes, right? That is correct. I believe I emailed you after our yep. meeting that uh, we decided to join. So the village would be part of yes. the district. The other thing that I, I just want to make sure is clearly understood, and maybe again, maybe I don't understand it, but this will clear that up. And that is um, that forming a district doesn't necessarily assure our ambulance for a <coughs> certain amount of money every year. Um, that the determination as to how much the ambulance would be paid, our ambulance service would be paid, would be a town board decision every year. So forming a district doesn't set, doesn't assure uh, a, a certain amount of money to sustain a certain level of service. It creates a new taxing district to fund whatever level of funding the town board commits uh, by a separate vote. That, that's, that's my understanding, absolutely okay. correct. You know, we, 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 this, this board would be the fiscal gatekeeper. So as with as, the as as protection with district, right. Yeah. Yeah. And one further point, if a taxing district was established, it falls into the current New York State law of a tax cut mm -hmm. as well. Is, it, it, is that calculated in the aggregate with yes. all? Oh. All right. Yes. So that you can't, you can't, for instance, with the fire tax, you couldn't, you have to look at all property tax that we levied. It would it would exclude special assessment districts, so right? It would just be, yeah, okay. And and the the consequence of that is that um, it would if we looked to increase um, either fire or ambulance um, more than the fairly modest uh, inflationary adjustments or whatever the controller's adjustments are annually. It would require a supermajority vote, basically, of the town board. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I just want to relay a comment that I that I got from a resident about um, the the clause about receiving regular financial reports and updates. Um, she kind of wanted some sort of maybe details about what regular means, and uh, I'm assuming, like always, we would meet annually with the with the ambulance district and they would provide their audited financial statements and and then we would evaluate their funding needs based on based on those numbers so regular doesn't mean five years it means a minimum of annually yeah i think it would be kind of similar to what we do with fire which and we've you know been having regular meetings with them All right. Um, the next item on the agenda for two weeks from tonight will be the uh, amendment uh, to the effective date of the High, high Point Sidewalks um, uh, ordinance change. I think we've discussed that um, 
fairly thoroughly. Uh, the next item will be um, the uh, chapter 167 form based code amendment um, regarding the uh, pet boarding and employee accessory dwelling unit up on Route 9. Um, we just got the uh, approval from the Saratoga County Planning Board today that's been circulated to the board. Um, and so that'll be on the uh, on the agenda for action two weeks from tonight. Um, next one is the um, old post road uh, construction. We're gonna have to make a change to the scope of work for Creighton, Creighton Manning, right, Kevin? No, you, you're on the wrong project. Uh, old post road, the perp, uh, that agenda item, Depends oh on yeah, I mean, this is this is complete streets. Yeah, it I'm depends tired. on how the right, right away process goes. Yeah. Right now, I have slated for a bid opening of June second, with the hope that we open bids on June second and we award the bid at your June meeting. However, if I don't have the right away, I'll be delaying that bid opening. It's kind of a placeholder right now to see what we end up with the right away side. Um, I might have to delay another thirty days for the bid opening. I would issue another addendum out to the contractor saying we've extended for another 30 days uh, due to uh, right away acquisition. So uh, the bid has been on the street. Um, so, and just uh, as I was talking earlier, one of the, when we issue this next addendum, which we will be issuing, I'm going to put into there just in the event that we chose to go, the board decide to use some funding of the American Rescue Plan over there. I'm gonna throw in the eight to 12 required contract clauses that are necessary in the document in the bidding phase so that if you decided to go that way, it would already it's be available there. to us. Yeah. So, good move. you know, our hope is to move forward as quickly as possible now that the, you know, public hearing has been scheduled for two weeks and, uh, you know, hopefully we can still do it by agreement, but whichever way we have to move as quickly as we can with eminent domain so that we can possibly get this done this season. I mean, is that going to happen? I remember when we were doing our complete streets, our timing was, I mean, is it possible to have that done this in this season still? I think it's still possible. Um, Anything's possible. What you're going to have, you know, you got to close on the right away award the bid, then there's usually about 30 days before a contractor start. But that, if everything's going right, hopefully we can start the clock running on the right uh, utility relocations that have to come first. And I think they require mm -hmm. two months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we were looking at into a, probably a fall construction project Close. anyways. So we might still make it. So that's, but time's running out. Yep. And we could still go out to bid this year with <clears throat> anticipated construction next year. So they would, we would right. be booked in their schedule. Next one is the uh, complete streets with the change for Creighton Manning, right, Kevin? Correct. Um, and that was as a result of the um, delays, et cetera, et cetera. So we had to extend the Creighton Manning's scope of work and this resolution will pay for it basically. Correct. Uh, delays were caused by anyone's guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's COVID delays, which were uh, New York State DOT took time to review structures and drawings, and we had troubles with getting some uh, um, supply uh, catch basins in and other structures that were needed. So uh, that's uh, part of this uh, dilemma. Uh, Malloy's uh, contract that got extended. So therefore, Creighton Manning had to be out there to inspect it. The project's almost done. Uh, they're on to basically a punch list. I think they have one driveway that they're uh, fixing some drainage issues on. They have some minor plantings maybe and a couple signs. So right. I think we're just about done. And one of those signs is a no left turn sign at Blacksmith. Yes. I yes. see we're, everybody we're, turning left there. Yes, we're replacing emergency only vehicles only sign with a no left, no left turn yeah hopefully that'll help yeah well, fingers crossed it's still might flush, not but still a flush median <laughs> i don't turn left there just so you know <laughs> so you're the one <laughs> <laughs> all right the next item on the agenda to discuss next time is the um uh, new vehicle for uh building and planning that we were just talking about 
Uh, it's going to be an echo sport, right, Kevin? Correct. That's the idea? Yes. Um, and the one after that is to uh, establish uh, workday and reporting for elected and appointed officials. And we think I, we have um, our town attorney and two judges and we're involved in doing that. And those reports will be kind of ready by the end of the month. Is that right, Kevin? Yes. Fairly routine item. Uh, all right, the next item, um, I think we've talked uh, before about the resignation uh, of, um, uh, on our on the Malta Foundation, um, and so uh, Rockwood just just resigned from it. Um, so we thanked him, you know, sincerely for his years of service on it. Um, Glenn did a really terrific job, um, but he moved out of Malta, and so he can't be an officer of the foundation. Um, that is one of the two appointments by the town of Malta. So um, we thank Glenn very much, um, as we've done uh, formally. And uh, this board has to appoint another, another uh, person to fill that. And uh, we think that uh, a, a terrific candidate for that position would be Judge Sloat. So that'll be before the board in two weeks. Oh, okay. That was not the name that we did. The, the other person we talked about, did he decide not to do it? The old supervisor. Oh, <laughs> the old supervisor. <laughs> oh, him. He just can't uh, do it. Huh? He cannot do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right. The next item is to appoint uh, two alternates um, to the ZBA and to move uh, Murray Eitzman uh, from an alternate position to a uh, regular full member. Um. The board dis has discussed this and uh, met with the people involved, and I think these were the decisions. Um, next item, and we've talked about this internally and through email, is uh, our policies for the, the COVID thing in light of the change in policy guidance, both by the CDC and by the uh, regulations and the executive orders in the state of New York. Um, uh, our sense is basically in this building and others other than the community center to follow that guidance. Um, and so we're ready to do that as of tomorrow morning. Um, the problem with the community center um, that I think we've discussed uh, through email and telephone calls is that, you know, we also have lots of regulations pertaining to kids and we have programs for kids up at the community center and we have regulations in terms of ascertainment of vaccination status, et cetera, et cetera, and masking requirements that differ. We have lots of different groups using the community center. And um, we think that at least as of right now, it's gonna be too hard to distinguish and make changes and change both in the period during a day and day to day. So the idea is to uh, keep the status quo at the community center um, and uh, Alyssa, you know, maybe you can just keep an eye on it for the next two weeks. and you know, basically give the board in two weeks your perception of how, how it's going. That's the idea. I mean, originally I thought Alyssa had suggested that the common areas, people be required to wear masks, but the, but the, you know, the individual rooms where we have people rent the space, that they be able to individually make decisions. Did we decide that that was too difficult to no, I think I think that's the way we're going to go. Do it. Okay, you know, except when when kids are in the gyms and stuff right. like that, right. they're subject to all that kind of stuff. So we have to follow that. But as far as the individual, once they're in those rooms, they can do what they. That's my sense. Is but that the right? common areas, they would be required to wear a mask. Right. Yes, yeah, so I'm ready to start that tomorrow as well. No, no, no. I was just going to well, just in terms of doing that starting tomorrow, yeah. but just and and then. You know, taking another look at it, telling the board what you think, whether they need to be changed, you know, loosened, restricted, you know, whatever. And I'm and I'm sure there'll be plenty more moving parts as we go forward. And just as we were in this meeting, DOH just lifted the mask requirements on camps for two to five year olds to not require them to be masked. So it'll be it'll be a moving target all summer, I'm sure. I, I see we have actually both of the justices here with us tonight. Is there do you? Are you comfortable with that, lifting the the mask mandate for in the court and just the honor system of? Talking I'm talking to you, and it looks like it looks like you're. <laughs> um, 
are you comfortable with the court being the same as town hall and that, you know, it's just the honor system of people not wearing masks that have been fully vaccinated? We're also following the court. Okay. Yeah, the, I think OCA had an announcement either Friday or today that said masks are going to continue in the court facility. Okay. I, yeah. oh, I see really? Jim unmuted himself too, but. Yeah, this is uh, Jim Fauci. So I, I didn't see that, uh, John, but uh, I did hear a memo was coming out from the state, but that would only apply to state courts. Don't know. And um, I heard the same memo was going to say then it would the only thing that it would address for us are like the local uh, town and village courts. It would be up to the town and villages themselves to figure that out, whether we're going to require masks or not. So. What I saw with Darren's emails that came through last week, um, and we discussed it in the court last week, that we were good with, I believe it was what, tomorrow that the town is going to lift the requirement for masks for all town buildings. Is that right? And for unvaccinated, for people who are not fully vaccinated, which means two weeks after your final dose. Right. I mean, yeah, of, of course, that's what I meant with, with yeah. that. So we were good with that too. Um, you know, we still are going by a um, person limit, you know, limiting the, the, the people inside the courtroom and courthouse uh, and distancing as well. Judge, you're correct. The, the memo from Judge DeFior says state courthouses. Yeah. I mean, I, I would be comfortable with, with, you know, you and Woody making the decision on how you want to proceed in the court. I don't know about anybody, anybody else, but you know, I, I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. I am as well. So you do you. Okay. So we'll, we'll go along Thanks. these lines, uh, you know, unless, unless the, uh, you know, the board wants to, you know, develop or vote on a, a formal resolution. We'll just, we'll just do this, see what happens in the next two weeks and then we'll, Report on it again. Thanks. Okay. Flatten the curve. Yep. Yes. Right. <laughs> See what okay. happens after Memorial Day. Next item. Are we going to have any budget transfers next week, Kevin? Yeah, or yes, two weeks? Sir. I'm sure. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. We're going to have a presentation uh, in two weeks by uh, Tim Larson regarding the uh, Luther, For Luther Forest Athletic Fields. And you know, we've been talking about, you know, the lighting. He's got some uh, great ideas of how the things are going to look over there. I'm, I'm excited about it. You know, what we've been talking about is how to make sure that once we light the fields, we're not going to create a situation where we're inviting use during the dark, but not providing some light, you know, in the parking lot and the paths mm -hmm. for, you know, people not to get hurt. So, you know, we're looking at that and, you know, hopefully we'll be talking to Tim Larson about it in two weeks. Just uh, the thing I'm, you know, there's a lot of information there. You know, the thing I'm focused on is, is the numbers. I mean, that's a lot of money. And frankly, I don't remember uh, how we figured we were going to, I know there's members items, there's mitigation money, but I do not remember clearly those numbers total, you know, millions of dollars. And you're going to have to help me recall how it is we're going to fund all that. We won't fund it all. But but yes. the the items the items yeah. that we're going to move forward with will yeah we I'll add that. Yep. okay yep. um okay I'd like to make a very a small change in the order of our agenda tonight um, I'm going to ask for a, an executive session on a legal proceeding that we have um, but before we do that what I'd like to do is other business and additional comments so that we can assure the public watching and hear that once we adjourn the executive session and come back into session to adjourn the formal meeting, we're not gonna have other stuff. So it's not as if people have to hang around or uh, stay on, uh, on Zoom. So uh, that being said, we'll move to item G, which is other business. Is there any other business um, for the board members? I'd, I'd just like to note that the Boston Bruins have eliminated the Washington Capitals from the <laughs> NHL playoffs, <clears throat> much to Jamie's uh, delight. <laughs> and Kathy has her hand up. Very good. 
Um, okay, any other comments uh, from town residents? And I see that Kathy has her hand raised. Anyone in this room? No? Kathy Eitzman, what you got for us? Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, I actually watched Toffee. That was a good game. Um, the other thing, I just want to clarify. So the Malta seniors have bingo and exercise on Wednesday. When we are in our meeting room or in our cluster, we do know the vaccination record of all those participants. Is it okay if we are in our room, bingo or exercise distancing to remove our mask? And, and I think the answer to that is yes. Alyssa is uh, um, nodding her head yes. And okay, I think perfect. that's the idea that the board has. Perfect. Great. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments from town residents? All right, then uh, I'll, I'll ask uh, for uh, board's um, motion. To, uh, I'll ask for a motion to move into executive session to discuss an item of litigation. So moved. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thanks very much, everybody.